Music seems to have an incredible power over us. It can make us happy, it can make us sad, it can make us forget about our troubles, or it can evoke memories of a loved one. Music even seems to have a healing power, a healing property. It can help people with Parkinson's disease walk without stumbling. It's a rehabilitation tool used following a stroke. Music can bring speech and awareness back to people who seem to be lost in a fog of dementia. Music is now being seriously tested as a kind of medicine, as a therapeutic intervention that can help patients reduce stress, reduce anxiety, reduce pain levels, lower the need for medication, and even help in the healing process. Now why would music have this power, this power to affect our emotions, alter our behaviors, and even fight off injury and disease? Now what is music? It's useful to remember that music is organized sound. And we human beings have a highly evolved capacity to use that sound to interpret what's going on around us. What is that noise? Am I in danger? Is it a possible meal? Or am I the meal? Should I freeze? Should I move toward it? Should I run away from it? Our brains and our bodies evolved to be highly attuned to the meanings of sounds and we have very basic emotional reactions whenever we hear something that's a different sound. Once we recognize it, it, it then is valued by us. Music or organized sound takes advantage of these same survival systems to capture our attention, modulate our emotions, and it now appears to promote healing and well-being. Now our bodies are largely controlled by chemicals. Chemicals that stimulate, that inhibit activity for our muscles, that send signals to billions of brain cells that make up our brains. Now, different chemicals produce different reactions. Many of the chemicals are produced from within the brain, and those are, as a group, called brain-derived chemicals. Remember, discovered less than 100 years ago, and they can be introduced from outside when we ingest medications and chemicals, and they affect our brains, they affect our bodies, and they might be in the form of medications or maybe it's coffee, maybe it's wine, maybe it's that wonderful piece of brain-healthy dark chocolate. Whatever it is, they act to chemically change the status of our brains and our bodies and can stimulate different behaviors. So, when we ingest sound, when we intake sound, we take that sound from the environment, our brain then interprets the meaning, and then we assign a value to the sound produced by an emotional response. In turn, the emotions stimulate behaviors and physical responses to that sound. When those sounds are intentionally organized to produce certain reactions, we can call those sounds music. Now, a recent article by two neuroscientists from McGill University in Montreal was entitled, and listen to this title, The Neurochemistry of Music. This title says it all and it charts a serious pathway for scientists to explore how music stimulates specific chemicals in the brain to give certain responses. They suggest in the article that there are four main areas that are influenced by certain music. Those four are pleasure, motivation, and reward, stress and arousal, social affiliation, which is bonding with others. And the fourth is maybe the most important in the long run, and that's the immune response. And much more is going to be learned about the mechanism, but what's clear is that we crave music because it initiates different types of neurochemicals that can motivate us, that can arouse us, that can relax us, that can lower our stress levels and bolster our entire immune system. And what's also clear is that listening to music influences our health through neurochemical changes. In fact, music may be a more powerful medicine than we ever imagined. And as the McGill researchers put it, Studies 
of the neurochemistry of music may be the next frontier. So stay tuned.